This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Hey guys, it is the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorgat, Sorgatron on the Twitter and the uh, Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA, uh, ready to catch up with uh, one of our favorites here on the show, returning once again, uh, J-Rock. But first of all, uh, please subscribe to the show, Indie Mayhem Show, on the iTunes, Stitcher, Speaker, iHeartRadio, and of course, Google Play Music, as well as the video versions on the Wrestling Mayhem Show YouTube and Facebook page, and of course, IndieWrestling.us. And that Facebook page is where we usually stream these interviews for Indie Mayhem Show these days. And uh, once again, I, I, as I mentioned, you know, somebody that we've had on the show a lot. Um, geez, I, J- 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 J-Rock, you've been joining us on the show like way before Indie Mayhem Show, I think, right? Indeed. I think it's been about a decade I've been coming on here with you off and on. <laughs> That's amazing. And of course, we did catch up with you a little bit here over the summer. But there's been so much going on. Uh, there's some big events uh, happening, I, I think, personally for you and your career, and, and also just in Cleveland in general. And I've been meaning to talk with somebody up there a little bit more about this. But you're part of a group up there that's got a very big show coming up this Friday on a pay-per-view with uh, CKCW, Cleveland Knights Championship Wrestling. Um, you've been you've been uh, involved with this promotion. Uh, it looks like since the inception. Is that correct? No, they ran the first couple of shows. Uh, I wasn't a part of it, but I. It, been about a year now that i've been with them and uh, i'll tell you what this thing this weekend it's clear it's one of the bigger i'm not trying to slight any other shows there's been big shows in cleveland but this is definitely one of the biggest that i've seen in, in the 20 years that i've been wrestling out of cleveland absolutely so tell us a little bit about um what what is it going on with uh ckcw that uh that is kind of uh, uh you know different than what's going on otherwise in indie wrestling in the area well, I mean, first off, this show's nuts because the world ran crazy with the with the uh, Eric Bischoff thing, and for months, I mean, I'll tell you what, the guy's catchphrase is "controversy creates cash." But I mean, as somebody who has seen this up close and personal, he intrinsically has a way of attracting controversy without trying. Let me just tell you that in in, in all reality, uh, it's amazing though the buzz about this show. Because from day one, I mean, they, this thing was on the news. I mean, Yahoo National Reports. I mean, it was everywhere. There's pictures of Eric Bischoff and Hulk Hogan, and and are they are they coming to Cleveland? Did they are they rebuilding a, an indie wrestling? It was great, an indie wrestling promotion. Like it was great. I've never seen an indie wrestling storyline. If if there has been any other ones that have taken on the life of their own, like Eric Bischoff coming to Cleveland did back in November. I'd love to see him because this was uh, this was crazy, man. It, you saw the stuff. I mean, it was nuts, and 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 Bischoff's on Twitter, you know, trying to to combat people throwing these stories at him. And every day, I'm getting another thing like, "Look, this was just on the news," you know. Mm-hmm. And you can't buy the type of publicity. But now that now that it's actually like close to showtime, this is going to be uh, this is going to be a hell of a show, man. I mean, it's. Uh, it's going to be a hell of a show. And I mean, the on air product and, and the live show, all of that put together. Absolutely. I, I know when it was first announced, it was, um, I, it, it was one of those things I looked twice at. Uh, I think it was the initial press release and, and announcements I saw on some wrestling websites of, uh, cause I think Eric, Eric Bischoff is, um, um, I forget if he was late. Was he late? What is the owner or commissioner or something of CKCW? And you read that, that, uh, away and you're just like, wait a minute. Did he just, is he is he competing? Is he is he back in the game? What's going on here? And plus, you don't see Eric Bischoff at indie shows um, often, yeah. if at all. I and, and to my memory, I don't remember much other than maybe a signing here and there. No, and I can tell you that he's not here to sign autographs. Like he's yeah. he's an actual part of this event, and uh, like this is going to be something quite unique. Like you said, Eric Bischoff, it, I would say. Name value wise, he's up there with you know names like Vince McMahon, and I don't mean just like. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to overhype him, but I mean, he's up there with those guys that have a name above just your professional wrestlers who people have heard of before. Um, this guy was one of the movers and the shakers of the business, and he doesn't do a lot of indie shows. And 
I found out this past week that this is actually the very first pay-per-view that Eric Bischoff has done outside the auspices of TNA or WWE, period. This is his exclusive first venture into the uh, independent pay-per-view market. So that's kind of cool. And, and he's going to play an active role. Like the on-air television product of this is going to be just like what you expect. It's going to be Eric Bischoff and, and a whole bunch of... Uh, a whole bunch of different talents interacting with him, but he's definitely not here just to take eight by ten. Absolutely, and 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 and, uh, and I've become familiar, of course, with the promotion. Uh, of course, CKCW is now part of uh, IndieWrestling.us as far as the digital download offerings, and and just when I, you know, we were, you know, we, we were talking and and uh, coming on board, and I'm looking at the shows that that were uh, given for onloading. And you guys have a this promotion is no stranger to big names. I mean the 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 indie darlings of you know Joey Ryan and uh, Kongu Kong and and uh, Taya Valkyrie, Shane Douglas a part of it. Uh, you know Shane Taylor with Ring of Honor, of course you know very well as we discussed last a uh, couple of times you were on here, J Rock. Uh, this is a promotion that's really kind of going for broke with like the talent coming in, right? And this seems to be they're they're really kind of stepping that up this time. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you what. This is the biggest example I can see of a promotion going all in on a show uh, would be this one here. Like when I started working with them, they very quickly because, you know, I had to talk with them just like I'm sure any veteran would uh, with some promoters that are new to the game about ways that they could uh, behoove themselves with the budget and, you know, all of those type of things. And they very quickly made it clear they had a vision on what they wanted to do and it had nothing to do with anything anybody else does they didn't want to be like anybody else they didn't want to use the same wrestlers as anybody else and that's one thing i can say if you look at the ckcw roster it's completely unique uh there might be one or two times that you even see on show in the area there's a couple myself because i'm out of cleveland you'll see me on a show here and there sean phoenix uh you'll see him on a show here and there sunny vice other than that I would say 85 to 90% of the CKCW roster is unique, uh, at least in the Ohio and in the Cleveland area, to CKCW. And especially the talent from Puerto Rico. The owners are Puerto Rican uh, from birth, and so they came from there over to here, and they love the wrestling history and tradition of wrestling over there. I mean, uh, the, the one owner tells me stories of going to buy a moon stadium and, and watching all of the – legendary stuff there and so they wanted to bring that flavor here and they didn't want to just bring hispanic wrestlers from america here to cleveland like they wanted to bring authentic puerto rican wrestlers and if you look they bring uh, thunder and lightning or the tag team champions they're like one of the most legendary tag teams out of puerto rico um uh, angel fashion roger star star roger excuse me who's one of the he's one of the better wrestlers pound for pound in the world there's a lot of people talking about him uh, just a lot of guys that they bring over there that that initially makes the roster unique. And then you mix it in with indie guys, like you said, from all over um, different everything. It's like the big circus. Everybody talks about how wrestling should be like a circus. But this is really pretty close to that something for everybody. If you look at this show coming up, I mean, there is literally from the old school to uh, the new school from uh, any style from women's wrestling to tag team wrestling to uh, high flying ladder matches, comedy. I mean, you name it, hard hitting, strong style. There is literally a match of almost every style on this show. And Eric Bischoff, too. I mean, besides the fact that he brings buzz and notoriety with his name, he is one hell of a performer. He's a captivating television personality. Uh, so imagine now Eric Bischoff interacting with guys like Team Storm, guys like Sean Phoenix, Tracy Smothers, guys that you see all the time. And then you mix in a big time television performer. That's going to bring a lot of rub to a lot of the guys uh, that are on this show here. And it really is something unique. And, and the fact that it's also on the, the iPay-Per-View through Fight TV and all that, that brings a whole different level to it because it's got uh, it's, it's such a strong lineup. It's got a replay attraction as well. Um, and on top of that, um, you never know what's going to happen. Jessica I, uh, she fights in the UFC. She's a good friend of mine. She came to the ring with me last time, ended up getting in a little altercation and ended up making a lot of uh, uh, viral clips in MMA and sports news circles and stuff all over. And she'll be at ringside with me again, this time against the seven-footer Congo Kong. He's not quite seven foot, but he's close enough when you're looking up from my size. But uh, you never know what could happen. So there might be a sports center moment there, and Eric Bischoff might just happen to be in the middle of it all. You just never know. 
That's awesome. That's awesome. And, and again, you know, it, it's really cool to see things like that when you guys do, you know, on the indie level, do something big like this, that it does get to reach outside of the butts that you can get in the seats here, uh, like the case with Fight TV and things like that. I mean, that, that, we talk about that a lot on on this show and some of the other ones about that accessibility that happens these days. And I mean, look at the show, too. Like you said, on Fight TV, it's $15. This thing is three hours. It's nine matches. And mm-hmm. I mean, uh, from top to bottom, I, we don't have to sell the whole card. But I mean, really, when you look at it, I mean, if you want my, my one of my favorite matches, on Tracy Smothers and Sean Phoenix, just that match alone is, is a very unique uh, clash of styles there. That's going to be a, it's going to be incredible. I don't care. Anybody looks at that. They would know right away what that is. Ricky Reyes and Cahagas. I mean, I'm just you could go through the whole card. Mm-hmm. No need to. I, it, it's it, very and just, just to put, put to put put over a name that that, that maybe name, some people don't know, uh, Sean Phoenix doing some really great things. He had a barn burner match at a stomp out cancer. Some videos over on the Indie Wrestling uh, US YouTube page, so you can get a little preview of his talent there. Going against something like trust. If you haven't seen Tracy Smothers, <laughs> he's a trip all of himself, right? So um, absolutely, everybody dies. Everybody mm-hmm. dies. Right? <laughs> All right, we do have some activity in the chat room, so I want to give a shout out to our boy Billy Johnson. He says he's going to be there, and he wants a picture with you, J Rock Friday. So uh, uh, make sure to keep that lookout for him. Absolutely. What's up, Billy? Uh, so, uh, so of course, big big things happening there in Cleveland. But of course, um, you're we talking about before you've been getting you had uh, I think when we talked last, maybe the last two times, you, you've been on this kind of career rejuvenation lately uh, over the last couple of years. And uh, and it sounds like that's continuing. It sounds like you have some Ring of Honor uh, stuff going on as well. Uh, how are things going there in those inroads that you've been? That you're everywhere. You're everywhere, man. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. I am doing my best to uh, to do what I can. Uh, when was the last time we talked? Uh, it? Looks like back in June. And I think oh, you. Okay. I think you were just starting to work with Ring of Honor a little bit. Uh, I made my first TV match with him. Well. Uh, back in October, I worked a house show match for him against, actually against Jay Briscoe in Michigan, uh, which went very well. And um, I'm going, actually, the day after the, the CKCW pay per view is Friday, Saturday in Atlanta. They're taping TV. I'm going down and booked for that. And, um, you know, there's some cool opportunities behind the scenes that I'm also going down there. And who knows? Uh, things could work out really well. But that's been progressing. I mean, each time I go, they keep asking me back, they keep giving me more to do um i like i've kind of i've joked with my friends i'm like well i've kind of like worked the the gauntlet i i started with a with a promo on a house show and worked my way up to a tv match and then a house show match and now here we go with a the next opportunity and, and it's kind of like hey, that's all you can do is just every time they they put something in front of you you do the best you can with it and they go okay cool something else and that keeps going this weekend but it's pretty exciting because it's going to be a crazy day friday and then literally four hours after it's over, I'm heading to the airport and shooting mm-hmm. out to Atlanta. And here we go for Ring of Honor. Let's see what we can make happen. Absolutely. And I think if I'm if I'm not mistaken, you've also been part of like uh, at least like the Dark Mass system or extra system with WWE. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, may have been since the last time we talked as well. I did mm-hmm. a, a loop since the last time we talked of uh, some TV extra work with WWE. And so that's pretty cool. Um, I was joking with my son, you know, I'm not going to take a picture like some of these guys and put it out there, but I got my big tax envelope from WWE the other day. And I said, man, kind of cool. After all these years, I have another <laughs> one of these. No, because it was a while. I mean, Hey man, uh, Shane McMahon, personally, we talked about it. Uh, not many people go 10 years before WWE calls them again and then come back. I'm, I literally sat there with Shane. I said, Hey, you know, the last time I was here, they paid me in cash. That's how long it's been since I've been an extra for WWE, you know? And But it was very cool. It was a very good experience. Adam Pierce is a hell of a guy and some cool things uh, progressing out of that too, you know? So who knows? The next few years, hopefully, in my career will be pretty fun. Mm-hmm. I, I'm just working. I'm working hard and I'm enjoying the hell out of it more than ever before, you know? Awesome. We, we talked with people that have, that touch base on on, on both uh, Ring of Honor, WWE. Seem like the biggest opportunities these days. There are people people are striving for in the in the in the independent wrestling uh, 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 area. So, so how does that compare? Because I know Ring of Honor. Obviously, they both kind of have their kind of farming systems kind of uh, uh, happening. Uh, uh, you know, maybe more opportunities with WWE as much as they travel. Um, 
what is what is it like uh, 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 going as an extra or somebody getting a uh, you know a dark match or whatever the case may be, one versus the other? Um. Well, I mean, there's there's big differences, of course, because of the size and the scope and and all of that of where they are and what you're doing. Um, WWE is a lot more uh, a lot more buttoned down and and a lot more draw between the lines, very defined what they want you to do. Ring of Honor usually gives you a bit more leeway, um, still some direction, but they're very good about. If they give you an opportunity, they give you an opportunity, and, right. and you at least will get a chance to show them something. And that's that's one of the things that I I think I changed my thoughts, and it's helped me in this kind of whatever you want to call it, rejuvenation, whatever you said here uh, in, in the last few years since I came back f- to wrestling, is changing the way I look at that. Um, I am a big goal setter, and I'm never happy. So I have a bad habit of never allowing myself to celebrate anything just right away. Uh, you know, I'm always worried about what's next instead of going, Hey, that was pretty cool that we did that. But one thing that I never was able to do was compartmentalize things and, and look at each thing as one individual thing. Like you go, it doesn't matter what it is. And now I teach guys and it's like second nature to me. It's like, if you go and your job is to be whatever it is, ABC, be the best ABC you can be, even if it's for 15 seconds. And then next time, your goal is for them to let you do that for 30 seconds. And then you go and you nail that 30 seconds the best you can, and you hope to turn that into 60 seconds. And then you hope to turn that into a more competitive opportunity. And then you hope to turn – and that's how you have to look at it. And instead of trying to eat the elephant in one bite, you can't. Nobody can. But if you, if you bite it into a thousand pieces, you can eat an elephant no matter how big you are. Do we do we transition an animal crackers talk here? No, I'm just saying. I would only <laughs> a Buddha, a little, a little, little bit, a little bit of Buddha talk there, but awesome. Uh, no, that's great. Uh, so, so other than that, of course, we've seen you a little bit here in uh, RWA in, in recent months as well. So it's good to see you uh, around and do some fun stuff, especially with the younger talent. I think we've talked about before in the area. Yeah, I have a blast up there. Dude, they love me in West Newton or what, man? <laughs> yeah, def- not <laughs> at first, but... The- is in the water. What is in the water in West Newton, man? Because them cats <laughs> love some Jay Daddy up there, man. We have a lot of fun. I know we've had a, a lot of a lot of our old favorites back on the show here because they've kind of in a new phase there, especially with the RWA or wherever they're at. Uh, Super Hentai, uh, Marshall Gambino. Um, it is a different crowd in West Newton. What is the craziest, weirdest, or favoritest thing that you've seen in 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 RWA with that crowd and experience uh, uh, since you were a part of that uh, the last couple of years? Oh, uh, I mean, it's ridiculous. Uh, some of the I don't know that they, they've been having these riot scenes at the end of some of these shows here. Marshall mm-hmm. game, you know. <laughs> ridiculous. A lot of times, I'm leaving by the end of it, so I just kind of see the craziness going on on my way out the door, but uh, <laughs> they get into it for sure. I, I love it, man. And it's sweltering hot in the summertime, you know, It's and there's something endearing about that, man. Being out there in July and wrestling, and, you know, losing 10 pounds of sweat, exhaustion, and I, I dig that. That crowd is right on top of you, and they're hot every month. And I'll tell you what, people sleep on RWA. Um, I love IWC. Always consider that, you know, one of my homes, no matter where I'm at. But man, uh, I want to say Derek said the last show. I know they set a bunch of records, and, it, and you know, all that stuff is relative speaking in indie wrestling. But I want to say, I want to say he's close to a year of 200 plus paid for them, and I think the company record for the highest gate like six shows in a row now which clearly means that they're on a hot run if each show is topping the one before money wise so that's kind of cool i mean that's actual business nobody ever looks at indie wrestling in actual business terms nobody they all talk about matches or crazy high spots or who's got followers on twitter nobody ever just looks at business and and I, that, I cannot nobody can take that away from rwa uh, they're drawn. Maybe everybody is. Maybe I don't. Maybe everybody in Pittsburgh is drawn right now. But they have been on a hell of a run. Whatever you want to credit it to, whether it's the, the just the town in general. I don't know if it's the angle that they're running with the heels right now or what. But 
Absolutely. And it, it really is. And it, it seems like that, that everybody has been coming for a good long time and they've just kind of built on balloon things. Uh, so, so it hasn't been too long since we've had you on last. So I want to ask you, uh, well, first of all, what are you, um, what's kind of got your eye these days? Is there any hot young talent or any other promotions you think uh, have got your attention uh, or even uh, maybe even driving uh, some inspiration from? Um. What do you mean as far as things I like to watch or places I want to go? Which which way do you mean? Uh, yes. <laughs> However you want to take that. <laughs> uh, well, I like Wrestle Circus. I kind of like what they're doing. Uh, just I like the I like the something for everyone aspect. I, I truly believe that that's what has been and continues to be wrong with wrestling in general, especially indie wrestling, is uh, everybody books niche stuff and expects the general public to like what a small portion of society likes and then they wonder why they draw 100 people or whatever to their shows and mm -hmm. um i i really i really dig that that aspect of it so i don't know i mean in the, you know wrestling's hot in general it's drawing pretty well um i just like to watch guys that like to do it right man you know like the, the, sean phoenix you brought him up earlier i can't i can't say enough good things about a kid like that um Always polite, always respectful, and uh, anything I can do to help him because he's always he's always listened and, and he's a good kid and he you know um, Jackson Argos you know uh, works his ass off you know in the ring but he, social media he, he gets it he promotes himself he promotes the promotion and the shows that he's on um, he's upgrading his look and his gear all the time constantly you know trying to that's to me what I love to see I love to see a guy. Who every time you see them, there's something different. I mean, yeah, maybe they can't afford to have a whole new everything every time, but every time you see them, they're a little more tanned, or they're in a little better shape, or they're a little leaner, or they got new gear, or they they did this or that or something. They're constantly just evolving. I love that, and so you see all these guys, guys like I said, like Jackson Argos, like uh, Pollock, the whole team Storm. I love those kids. Um, RC gets slept on. He's he's actually pretty entertaining, and he just gets kind of slept on as the third guy in the group um sunny vice sunny vice gets slept on by everybody that kid's a hell of a man he can't figure out how to do it on his own yet he still has to be led around but man when you lead him he can follow and he can have a hell of a deal man i had some good stuff with him in cleveland for joe dombrowski uh, but there's tons of guys out there man and i just i love to see that i love to see uh, young kids out there get at it. And then I love to see them try to keep up with me because that's what's fun because I haven't met one of them yet that can. Andrew Palace, there was one. We talked about him before. And I was dying to get in the ring with him. And him and I had a hell of a match for uh, for Joe Dombrowski at their anniversary show, man. And uh, I, when we were done, man, I, I, I was talking to him. He's like, hey, man, you're a real deal. And I'm, not, I'm not saying, like, I love to go with a young guy. And, like, they have to keep up with me and I was like he was one of the guys on my list of hey I want to get in here with this kid and see what we could do and we tore the house down I mean he definitely was right there with me but that was pretty cool because you know at least for now I can still go with uh with the guys half my age that's awesome uh so again since it's been a little bit since we've just a little bit since we talked to you what's the best and worst thing about indie wrestling in the past uh six months man um well, I mean, that's such a that's such a broad question. I don't know about the worst thing. Um, I mean, it keeps wrestling in general is hot. Indie wrestling is as hot as it's been. I mean, look at it. Um, I mean, that's always a good thing to see because you know there's more work, there's more opportunities and stuff like that. I don't know about a worse thing. Um, I'm not trying to like critique other people and start all all kinds of drama or whatever. I just like this guy that it, and I see a lot of that here in indie wrestling period. I mean, there's more guys, you know, that look good and they have the, like there's more guys that get it than there were before, but, uh, but there's still, there's still that disconnect, man. There's still something where most of these guys, when you watch them, they look like guys trying their best to imitate wrestlers rather than actually be pro wrestlers. Even if they got good bodies and stuff. I don't know if that makes sense, man, but they just, they don't know how to be what they portray. They know how to portray it, but they don't know how to actually be it. And so, you know, 
whatever. And there's, you're getting to the time now where in the next four or five years, I kind of always bridged it with my career just by the age of guys and the generation of names. Uh, when you look at who's where, pretty much who's the last generation of guys who were trained by guys who put food on their tables in wrestling. Once, like, my generation of guys is gone, everybody new will have pretty much been trained by people who learned how to wrestle from people who learned how to wrestle, but were not taught by people who actually put food on their family's tables by wrestling. And so you learn it differently. You teach it differently. Those guys, you can say old school, new school, whatever, but um, I have yet to have anything that a guy like that has advised me that has not worked. So you can tell me whatever you want, but they know what they're talking about. And I think that wrestling really suffers when that happens. So it's going to be tricky to see if it, you know, it doesn't completely change the product even more in the next five or 10 years. Awesome. J rock always great to have you here on the show. Again, if people want to check out on iPay-per-view, if you're catching us before and you want to catch it live February 9th at 8 PM Eastern time, 5 PM Pacific time, Hey, it's uh, across country. It's worldwide. Check it out at Fight TV. You can check it out. Fourteen ninety nine. If you're catching this afterwards, you'll still be able to catch it online there. And of course, we'll likely have the show over at IndieWrestling.us as well. Uh, so uh, this is the one you're not going to want to miss. There's a lot going into this. Well, one of the most controversial figures in professional wrestling there, and of course, J Rock Daddy. I mean, yeah, <laughs> seriously, the, the card. I'm working with Congo Kong, but I mean, just go down the lineup. Tracy Smothers versus Sean Phoenix. Ricky Reddits versus Tokyo Monster Cahagas. That, to me, could steal the show. Uh, Vanilla yeah. Vargas versus Solo Darling. First time they've ever wrestled. Team Storm against uh, Hiram Tua and the phenomenal BJ from the island of Puerto Rico. Mike Mendoza versus Star Roger in the title match from Puerto Rico, which could be a, a show stealer. State line and the powers of pain. Powers of pain still look like they did freaking 30 years ago. I swear. I saw the picture that they used for the flyer. And I, you know how a lot of times when a guy's, you know, uh, been wrestling for 20 or 30 years, they'll use a picture from when they were young and virile and they'll put that on the flyer the picture on the flyer is these guys like six months ago but it looks like a picture of them from 1988 it's ridiculous but uh they look great the powers of pain uh there's a seven person uh, like a money in the bank style ladder match uh cody rice the husky heartthrob makes his debut in cleveland he's never been here before it's gonna be a hell of a show man i mean that lineup is is pretty deep that's Plus a- eric Bischoff. Well, Eric Bischoff, on top of all that, thank you so much. Where can they find J-Rock online? Oh, man. Um, I don't do a lot with my website anymore. It's out there, but it's so uh, uh, ridiculously outdated. Just find me on Facebook, Jerry Myers or J-Rock, and uh, that's pretty much the best place to find me. Awesome. Or you can tweet with me, of course, on the Twitter box at J-Rock Daddy, J-R-O-C-C-D-A-D-D-Y, and Instagram is the same, at J-Rock Daddy. Check it all out. And, of course, you can follow everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com and IndieWrestling.us for the independent wrestling news and all the rest of the wrestling talk that we have going on, of course. Keep an eye on the Facebook uh, uh, events for uh, both Indie Wrestling and Wrestling Mayhem Show to see the next uh, interviews that we have on that you can join us live and subscribe on the uh, iTunes podcasters, wherever you like to listen or view these things. And it'll show up there as soon as uh, these come up weekly uh, so you can't miss uh, one of them because you never know what's going to happen thank you so much to our guest J-Rock and until next time please support indie wrestling give it up one time this show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network find out more at sorgatronmedia.com